Now it's time for an inside story with Pastor Isaac Neal of Logos Christian Fellowship in San Jose. Second Timothy, uh, chapter one. You have it. In Second Timothy, chapter one, and verse seven, it says, "For God has not given us the spirit of fear." but of power and of love and what? Sound. A sound mind. There are so many people today that are confronted with fear in their life. Amen. Now, as a believer, I want you to understand this, is that God didn't give it. And see, the, the attitude, the mind that we should have, if God didn't give it, then what do I want with it? God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. So if God didn't give it and you have it, then where did it come from? It's not God. Now, did you notice that it says a spirit of fear? Mm -hmm. It's a spirit. Amen. Did you, you recall, how many of you remember Adam and Eve? Well, you recall in the garden, Adam and Eve, they, they did what? what did they, how did they sin? Okay, they disobeyed God and they ate of the tree. What was on the tree? <laughs> you know the Bible don't say it was an apple. I don't know, it was fruit on the tree. <laughs> Somebody said an apple. They even went as far as to say Adam's apple. <laughs> Whatever that means. But you know it said they disobeyed God. They ate of the, the fruit of the tree which God told them not to do so, right? And then after they ate up the tree, then they went, they hid themselves. Remember that? Yes. It said, God, God said, Adam, he called out, Adam, where art thou? And then he said, and then the first thing out of Adam's mouth was that, I was afraid. He said, I was afraid. In other words, for the first time in Adam's life, he knew fear. <laughs> God never designed for us to know fear. There was never God's plan for us to know fear. Amen. God's plan for you and I is that uh, for us not to walk in fear. Do you know that there are so many people that are living in fear today? There are people that are fearful. They, they stay home many times. There are some people don't leave their house because of fear. They read their horoscope. Amen. There are some people that allow other people to dictate to their lives and they don't do certain things. I'm, when I say other people dictate to your life, I'm talking about in a negative sense. You know, there and I'm not, 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 I'm not talking about this out in the world. They're in certain, certain churches. I trust not here. There are some ministers or preachers or pastors that control people by fear or with fear. Amen. Now, what do you mean they control by fear? Well, I know some people, some pastors say, somebody comes to the pastor say, look, pastor, you know what? I'm, I want to be leaving the church. I believe God is leading me to leave this church and go someplace else or whatever. And then the minister will say, say, you know, I would pray about that. Say, you don't know what will happen to you. <laughs> Amen. Say, say something, may, something bad may happen to you. You better stay here. <laughs> it's, it, that's, that's controlled us by fear. And, and there are people that teach in a certain way, trying to control people with fear. You know that's not God. God don't act like that. God don't do like that. Amen. Amen. Now, now this is for you and I. If you try to control an individual with fear, that's wrong. You know their husband and wife. Well, most times the husband, <laughs> but not in every case. But their husband that are controlling their wife by with fear. I, I'm talking about not only just threatening them physically, but sometimes actually getting physical with their wife. 
And I mean hidden them. Amen. That's wrong. Or verbal abuse. That's wrong. Do not, do not try to control people with fear. Don't use fear tactics. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. See, the, the question is, it's like this. Would Jesus do that? Now, now I, I used this example before, but I thought it was very good, so I use it again. Uh, we, I was at this service, in, um, and in the service, it was an evening service, and service had held kind of late, and so people were ready to go, and there were several preachers there. And one of the one of the ministers got up, and he was standing there, and he said, we're going to let you go in a few moments. And, and some of the people got up and started leaving. And then he said, I, I suggest you stay. Don't leave. He said, I knew someone who left service early like this, and, and they got in a car accident. In other words, he was saying something bad may happen to you if you leave early. Amen. And so, uh, I, I, you know, I, I was thinking about that. It didn't strike me right when he said that. And then later on, I was thinking about it, and thought came to my mind, would Jesus say that? Huh? Because see, if Jesus won't say it, then I have no business saying it. And so, uh, that's wrong. You know, people use fear tactics in trying to raise an offering. Come on now. I don't have a problem with you giving. But if I threaten you and say, if I say that you, you, uh, you want to be cursed with the curse if you don't give. Somebody said, well, that's what the Bible said. Yeah, the Bible said that. But when did he say it? The Bible also says Jesus has delivered us from the curse of the law. Man. See, Jesus didn't deliver you from one curse and the other still in faith. No, if he delivered you from one curse, you delivered from all curse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Say, say, Amen. Say. And people, people will stand up and they'll, they'll say things like, if you don't give in this offering, uh, God got a way of taking, receiving that money from you one way or the other. See, I've been around the church a long time. Amen. They tell you you get in a car accident or you end up paying the hospital bills. But see, that's not God. That's not God. God is not going around making you sick to get you to give in the church. That's not God. What I'm talking about, people use fear to control people, and that's wrong. Amen. But it says here in this verse of scripture, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I hate to say it, but many times Christians are living in fear for one reason or the other. And God did not want you there. See, you have to know it didn't come from God. If it did not come from God, then we have no business with it. Amen. But did you know it says that but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is the spirit that God has given us. The spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Power to resist temptation. Power to resist fear. Power to speak to it. And then it says of, of, of and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. We, we have love. Mm -hmm. We have the love of God. The Bible said that the love of God has been poured out in our yeah. hearts by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I want you to turn with me to the uh, first John. Look at first John chapter four. Mm -hmm. In the book of uh, first John chapter four. And we're going to look at verse 15, four and 15. You have it? Yeah. I'm not going to keep you very long. I don't want nobody, no one leaving. <laughs> Look at verse 15. It says, Whatsoever, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have what? Oh. We have known and what? 
believe the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. See, now that's the key right there. We have known and believed the love that God has to us. Saints of God, we need to know that God loves us. That's where it's at. It's knowing that God loves you. Amen. We know and we believe that God knows us. Now notice what the verse 17 says. Herein, herein, in this, in what? In that knowing and believe that God loves us. Herein is our, our, our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no what? No fear in love. See, there's no fear. The Bible said God is love. If there, there's no fear in God. There's no fear in love. Because, because, uh, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear has torment. Fear has torment. Amen. That was one of the things that, that when the angel appeared to Mary, when the angel appeared to Zechariah, first thing they said was fear not. God always comes with the message of don't fear. Fear has torment. But perfect love casts out fear. See, God's love is perfect. See, what it is, it's a knowledge of knowing that God loves you. It's a knowledge of you realizing you have experienced the love of God. That's where it's at. You realize and you experience the love of God. Saints of God, let me tell you people that God loves us. See, God loved us from the beginning. The Bible said in the beginning, God. Well, who was in the beginning, God? Well, who is the beginning, God? Well, who was before God for the beginning began? God. Don't blow your mind up trying to think of that. Amen. See, God is the beginning. And, and you were in the plan, in the mind and in the plans of God from the beginning. Now you are, you are special to God. Yes. You are valuable to God. God loves you. Amen. Everybody say, God loves me. God loves me. Yes, yes, he does. You was not just an afterthought. Come on, God had you in the mind, in his mind, in his heart from the beginning. You know that we say a lot of things. We say a lot of things that's not so. You know, uh, we sing a song that says, When nothing else could help, God gave his son. God gave his son. When nothing else could help, God gave his son. Right? We say that. But see, there was never a time when there was nothing else could help. See, when you say that, you infer that there was something possibly, a possibility, but the possibility did not exist. See, it, it, it didn't exist because God knew it. He knew there was nothing else could help. Amen. So God gave his son. Before there was a where or when, before there was a this or then, God. Amen. We were in the heart and the mind of God. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying that you're special with God. Amen. I'm saying that you are somebody. Amen. That you're a person of great value. Amen. 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 Many times we belittle ourselves. We look down on ourselves. Because see, do you know why you do that? Because no one knows you like you know you. Amen. But see, God knows us better. God is looking at you and I. He see the plan that he has for your life. He, we see ourselves one thing, but God see the true you. Amen. 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 What we need to do is realize that I'm special in the sight of God. That, that, that God loves me. Do you not know that God loves each and every one of us the same? Amen. God doesn't love me any more than he loves you. Although I am number one on this list. Y'all know that. 
Out of all the people in the world, I'm number one. I agree, I agree with that statement, sister. The rest of you folks don't know it. Uh huh? I mean, you know it. See, if you see, if we know, if we know and believe that God loves us, Amen. you know and you believe that God loves you. Then you know what? Don't you know that's going that will put a hop, a skip in your step. Amen. My goodness. Don't you know that when people say things about you, that's not going to drag you down and pull you down because they don't think much of you? My goodness, God loves you. Now, I'm number one with God. I'm special with God. Later for what you got to say. Amen. So God loves us with an everlasting love. Now, 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 what is it then? Well, I, 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 I know, I know that he loves me. Glory to God. So, so what does, what does this do? This is, this helps to perfect the love of God on the inside of me. This helps to cast out fear. Why should I fear? There's not one of them. Now listen, what if Jesus come floating down through the roof? And he stands in the midst. Now all we have are pictures of Jesus, right? Say Jesus lined up some of those pictures we have, long white robe, beard, some long hair. I mean, that's the way you, pictures that we see now, right? But what if he come down with, with uh, uh, based on the book of Revelation, his feet polished with fine brass, and he comes floating down through, and his, and his hair is like wool, and there's a glow from him. And we know that we know this Jesus. Amen. And Jesus, he comes over and he looks around. He says, uh, Craven? Craven? Uh, I'm, I'm going to kick it with you today. <laughs> Who, me, Lord? You know, Craven, he, 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 Craven, Craven, Craven just going and he just walking, going going through the evening and I mean he go out to eat and, and everything and people see Jesus. Glory to God. Don't you think they look at him like he's special or something? They know it's Jesus. I mean if Jesus walked in here right now don't you think you would know him and recognize him? Now let me ask you this. Do you believe that Craven would have any fear? He'd be just as bold as all get out. Amen. Amen. He'd just be just bold. Well, why? Because Jesus is with him. Now listen, folks. We have Jesus on the inside. He said, I'll never leave it, nor will I forsake it. Somebody said, well, I don't feel like it. Well, he didn't say it's based on your feelings. He said, I come to abide with you. See, now that is if you're a child of God, if you belong to him, if you receive Jesus as your savior, if you confess him and made him your savior, then he's living in you. He's he make his home in us. He's living in us. Saints of God, there's no need to fear. Amen. 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 Glory to God, because God loves us. I want you to turn, this is the last verse of scripture. Look at Eph uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. The love of God. See, we got to believe that God loves us. Amen? Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. Do you have it? It says, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We have family in heaven and we have family on the earth, amen? amen. It said that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in what? Love. Notice what it says, rooted and grounded in love. You know, that's what the Bible said. A lot of times we say rooted and grounded in the Lord. Or rooted and grounded in God. But it says rooted and grounded in love. Now, it's really saying the same thing because God is love. But I'm just telling you, this is what the scripture says. It says rooted and grounded in love. 
Amen. And once we're rooted and grounded in love, it says, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and depth, and height, and to know, now listen, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Did you get it? It says, and to know the love of God. See, that's the problem. We need to know that God loves us. That is, the, that is the situation right there. And to know the love of God, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Saints of God, this should be our practice every day. Is speaking to ourselves and saying how much God loves me. Amen. Amen. We are to know the love of God. God loves us with an everlasting love. See, people get upset with you and, and they don't want to have anything to do with you. You know anyone like that? I didn't say point them out. I just asked you, you know any? Amen. Yes, people will get upset with you and don't want to have anything else to do with you. But not God. God never gets upset with us. Isn't that good news? God never gets mad at us. Isn't that good news? You know there are a lot of people who believe God gets mad at them? Oh yeah. There are a lot of people who believe that God, God thinks that they're second class. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know Pastor Dale was first class. <laughs> He's the pastor. He, he got he got he got top billing. He, he's in a in, in, in God's at God's right hand. That's what people think. Or he have a special uh, he got he have power with God. That's what people think. Come on now. All right. I don't have I don't have that kind of power. See, that's the way people think, but not so. God doesn't look at, that, like, at it like that. God loves you, 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 and you as much as he loves me. God loves us the same. Did you hear what I said? God loves each one of us the same. Amen. The, the problem is that some people, I won't say it's a problem, but the knowledge, the truth about it is some people know it and others don't. And if you don't know it, and if you don't believe it, then you're not going to take advantage of it. Stand with your feet, everybody. Now, remember what I said? That Jesus was walking with Craven this afternoon? Now, if there's something in his heart, don't you think he could say, Lord, uh, will you just take, since you're here, would you just take care of this from me? <laughs> would you handle this from me, Jesus? Amen. Amen. You know, we can say the same thing today. Amen. He's here. Yes. And we can say, Lord, I, I just want to give this to you. Yes. I need you to work this out for me. Yes. I'm tired of I need you to fix this. And I thank you. There are people here today. Do not allow fear to govern your life. Now I'm not trying to step on folks' toes or anything. I'm just I'm just telling you the truth. But you know there are people here, they don't go certain places because of fear. There are certain people who don't even drive the freeway because of fear. Come on now. Come on now. I, I mean, everybody's not in the same place. But I'm just telling you, there's certain people that don't, don't. My mom, she's, she's dead and gone. Resting with the Lord right now. But she did not like to go up into the mountains around the narrow roads. I took her to uh, Yosemite once, and I did not realize she, she was so fearful. Because if you've ever been to Yosemite, you have to go around, around the mountains. That's fear. Some people don't fly in an airplane. 
because of fear. Come on now. No, I'm just saying, these are the little things that sometimes they govern our life. God do not want us in any type of fear. Don't, don't, don't look at me bad now. I'm just saying, there, there's, there's some shortcomings in all of our lives. Come on now. There are things that hinders us because of fear. There's things we don't do because of fear. Some things we don't do for the Lord because of fear. And, and sometimes it's, it's just being selfish because we're thinking of ourselves. You know, I don't want to look bad. Come on. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm let you go. I'm going to let you go in a few minutes. Now, if there's anyone in this, in this building confronted with any type of fear in their life, I just want you to come down here. This is not going to take long.